checking out polling places across our area. This election is a very significant source of stress. Political and cultural discussions on social media. Indicators point to record-breaking turnout. And this is a big day to go out and vote. We're in Philadelphia today because it could theoretically decide who inhabits the White House. The rhetoric of the campaign has been such that people are questioning the sanctity of this process. I've been covering elections for almost two decades. Because of South Florida's history of difficulties for voters accessing polling stations or exercising their right, it is very important for us to report on these issues. Most newsrooms ask a very important question on Election Day, which is, who won? It's a great question. It's a super important question. We're asking a different question, which is, who can vote, who can't vote? Where are there problems that are preventing people from being able to vote even though they're eligible? The story of how voting actually happens at polling places and what the experience is like for the average voter, that's a harder story to track. So the idea behind Election Land was, let's take advantage of technology and data to allow newsrooms and journalists to work together across the country to collaboratively cover the experience of voting on Election Day. What's actually happening at the polls? I've covered Election Day all around the country, and what I would used to do is look at a map and then just drive around to various schools, uh, because that's where polling places are, to see if people had any concerns or to get a sense of what voters were thinking about and talking about that particular day. It was a little bit of serendipity of being present at the right time, the right moment where problems would happen. There are 1,100 journalists working on election land, either here in New York, out at local newsrooms, or in the journalism schools. So it's an enormous coalition. We're not covering politics. We're not covering the candidates. This is about voting. Election land is the first effort to really crowdsource voting place issues in real time with a nationwide network. We're beginning to see a small cluster of voting machine problems in Philadelphia. We're seeing a lot of that in New Jersey. Okay, so machines Both are broken. machines, only one machine. In terms of the access to information, what we have now is incredibly high speed access. You know, as soon as something happens, somebody's going to tweet about it or post about it or search for it. It's gotten a bit more heated because they called police on that. The great thing about social media and technology is that we have tons of information. The problem is that there's almost too much and you don't know what's verified, what's true, what's misinformation. We're sorting signal from noise. All those tips are being brought in. Professional journalists are then looking at where they came from, who the source was. Well, they were able to verify it. It would help if we could find out where it was. Yeah, I think it's in the Philadelphia area because I've got a link to uh, Philadelphia at the Before moment. Before you put it in, can yeah. you just double check? All of that data will go through a desk called the Catcher Desk, and they'll take the social media data that's been verified, other data sets that are coming in, look for big problems, and then pass those through to our reporters who are here writing, as well as about 450 local journalists to follow follow up on and hopefully publish or air a story in time for the polls still to be open. Uh, hi Teresa, this is uh, Paul from Public Land over here. in Election Land. The issue is lack of Spanish language assistance in polling places in uh, Miami area. Okay. I'm including a link to his post on Facebook. Perfect. Okay? Okay, okay. Thank you. Data is very valuable because it informs our actions. Everything that is presented through Election Land has been verified already. We do another layer of verification. Uh -huh. Somebody that explains. Somebody's playing. It seems to be pretty smooth, at least in the polling stations that we've been to. It looks like the, that situation that we got the tip was an anomaly instead of a, a recurrent pattern. Is that the woman over there with yeah, her daughter? She, she went home, she made signs. We came to this uh, ward in South Philly because we got a tip and uh, we didn't hear of any intimidation, but we did see a bit of a confrontation over signs. Yeah, you can tape them on the outside of the fence, you just can't have them inside because they're not official signs. Is that a Philly law yeah, or a, the Yes, it's, well, for basically it's for any polling place, off. really. There's almost 1,700 voting places in Philadelphia, and Pennsylvania being a swing state, it can certainly change the election, which is why even these isolated incidents are important to keep an eye out for.
The tone of the election makes me concerned that things could be uglier than normal on the streets, and that has not happened, at least in, in any sort of significant way. Elections is one of the most important things that we cover as media. Our ultimate goal is to tell stories that matter to our community. It is our job. I think that journalism on its best day can help, you know, ferret out truth and can hold government officials accountable and can make this a better, improved democracy. Democracy requires transparency. It requires us being able to see what's going on. But this is where data can be really useful. Because one thing to feel emotionally that things aren't right, but actually to know whether or not that's the case is really, really important. The data overall, I think, is telling us that most of these incidents are isolated and that there aren't huge problems in many different parts of the country. Yes, there have been problems in certain areas, but journalists have been able to go and investigate individual cases and learn that those problems aren't necessarily as widespread as we had feared. There's been a lot of misinformation out there, but we're dedicated to reporting out the facts and we're focused on making sure that the truth is what um, comes out in our reporting and in the reporting of our partners.